Hey, hey, this is Terry Bean. We've got a cool episode of Business Growth Time. Today, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn, the ultimate social business networking tool. Did I say it was social and business? It ain't. It's just business, baby. With me, as always, my good friend, the lovely and talented, my high school pal, Janet E. Johnson. Today, the E stands for election is almost over, baby. Oh, yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, God, that's, a, that's actually not a very good E. Let's just <laughs> well, no, it's the all, all over part is yay. Let's go. Uh, let's just get it done with. Yes, exactly. I know. I'm even holding off on marketing people's stuff. I said, you know, let's just kind of, you know, be static quo, status quo until as soon as that's over with, boom, the whole retail market, you know, everything's going to start going towards the Black Friday talk and. You know, it's going to be a big change. Yeah, yeah. I, it'll be refreshing. I, You know what? I've never been excited to hear about Black Friday sales, but please bring on the yes, info. Exactly, <laughs> take it. Exactly. Take it. Well, yeah, and the interesting thing is when people are listening to this podcast recording, it will be after. It will be over, and you will remember it fondly, and be so <laughs> glad and then you will, done. You will be listening going, I know who the president is, and I right know. now we don't know. So that's-, <laughs> that's true. We do not. We have no clue, um, and we yeah. care, so that's all right. All right, so here's what's up. We're going to talk about LinkedIn today. Why? Because LinkedIn is the single most significant business networking tool there is. Most people... Think of it as like this online resume where lots of recruiters are running around trying to grab different contacts and it's a good place to get a job. So those people are right. I don't want to discredit that as an opportunity or something that happens there, but there's a lot more going on. So Janet, you're a LinkedIn user. When'd you get on? Oh, forever go with you probably I mean I, I don't even know it might have been before right around the Facebook time I don't even know yeah it's been it's, it's been a while day one. I mean uh, you know maybe day 30 you know but it was pretty much were, were there six degrees of people that you could see back then did you get on in the six degree form uh, that sounds familiar but I don't even remember because that was you know, I probably signed old. up and then ignored it for a while you know what I mean there you go that's what happens a lot that's that's for sure that's for sure um so let's talk about what you can do the number one and number two thing and they're super close and i'm not sure which one's one and which one's two the number one thing you can do is be found by the people that are looking for you if you look and do a google search on your own name guarantee one of the top five results that show up Ooh, I'm doing it. Will be your LinkedIn profile. I put an E though. I don't. I think. Oh, I'm do you have an E in your? In, yeah. So no, yeah, I don't. Actually, you do. I know you do because I tag you frequently. Now, here's <laughs> the funny thing. I tag her on LinkedIn. Let's just clear that up. Um, funny thing about this is your name's Janet Johnson. There's like four million Janet. Yeah, it's pretty so, tough. Oh, that's... there it is. Number um four. It's LinkedIn. Woo! I said top five. So. Here's what the reality, if Google, excuse me, yeah, if Google trusts LinkedIn that much for people search, shouldn't you? Google's going to LinkedIn first to find people, right? Because that's how good LinkedIn is. So the number one reason is to be found by the people that are looking for you. And and I've said it for a long time, if Facebook understood search half as well as LinkedIn understands search, LinkedIn wouldn't exist. Facebook would have wiped the map with them a long time ago. So that's the number one reason. The number two reason, and I, again, it's maybe number one, I'm not really sure, but is being able to find the people you need to find. So think about your business, Jana. You're looking for new clients. You're doing some prospecting. You're out trying to sell and find some new opportunities. LinkedIn is the ultimate people search right? So regardless, if you're trying to find a marketing director at Honeywell or someone that's the CMO of lead pages, whatever the case may be, the more content and context that you have around who you seek, the easier they are to find inside of LinkedIn. And that advanced search feature 
you can look at so many different criteria. Mm. You can search by name. You can search by company. You can search by industry. You can search by title. You can search by, by geography. And that's all the free stuff, right? So once you get past, if you want to pay money, then you can get into like company size and seniority and how long they've been there in different groups that you can be a part of. So it's staggering the amount of information and the ease of connecting that LinkedIn offers. Now, here's a pro tip. You don't have to just connect with somebody on LinkedIn once you find them. What you could do is use LinkedIn like we used to use the yellow pages. Get the answer you're looking for, pick up the phone, and call the person you're trying to meet. Because the difference between calling Honeywell and saying, hi, I'm looking to speak to your marketing director, and hi, I'm looking to speak to Janet E. Johnson, who is the marketing director, is the difference between getting at least to their admin or voicemail and being like, I'm sorry, sir, we don't give out that information. So use the technology, use the tool, use the information to get what you seek. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep, it does. If, as long as they have the, the, well, the company would have the phone number and you have the actual name now and you know their title and all that stuff. The only thing I, I'm not a fan of with LinkedIn is when you're digging around, you get seen. You know, so I'm always like, should I click on them? Do I want them to see that I was snooping on them? You know. So that's a really interesting point. There's a setting that you can change so they don't see you, right? Yeah. And, you know, and I can see it, recruiters do that all the time. Yeah. They, they're they like, someone from XYZ industry in Detroit looked at you. You know, for me, what, what do I care? You know, if somebody yeah, sees too. that I was looking at them, good. Maybe they'll say, hey, why is this dude looking at me and send me a note? They look back. You know, that's that's a good point. Yep. So and it, that happens. Yeah, it does. And there's a, there's a little section, right, under profile. So if you look at the tabs across the top of LinkedIn, there's home and then profile. And if you click the profile tab, one of the things it says is who's viewed your Dude. profile. I know. I so know. That's a, I look at that quite often. Yep. Do you? That's awesome. I, do. I would, mm -hmm. I, because of the way it's set up in the free version, and I don't know how many views people are getting. Some people get 14 views uh, a day. Some people get 14 views every three months, right? It depends on how active and how much content you're putting out there and how many people you're connecting with and how much time you actually spend on the site. But if you're getting more than 14 views in a month, you're going to want to check that who's viewed your profile every week because it only shows you the last five or six people that yes, have your profile. Exactly. So you're going to want to do that repeatedly because here's the deal. The reason people are looking at your profile is they found you, right? Now, they may have been suggested to look at you just from their homepage on their phone. You might have commented on something recently on one of their friend sites but they may have been doing a search for very specific criteria in your profile pulled up. And if your profile pulled up when they were doing a search, that means they were looking for someone to do something you say you do. And if that's the case, when would you like to know that? Like yep. now, right? So you can always just quick send them a note. Or again, you know, I always send notes. Hey, I saw that you were peeping my stuff. What's up? Okay. I do that. We do that consistently. It, it, daily, it's checked, and uh, we actually send a thing that's a static message. So, What's your static message say? We're close to, roughly. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I might have it. Um, thanks for snooping on me. Ah, you know what? It hasn't been done lately for some odd reason. I guess I'm going to have to see why um but it just basically says um i don't have one reese uh you know hey i saw you viewed my profile if there's anything i can do to help you just let me know cool very basic very cool i would uh i would do a i would add a very specific kind of thing you do and i would also add a i'd love to learn more about you and how it may be of service to you and i would put that first Right. Always about them, then about you and and then go from there.
And it's crazy to me because I get, I get messages through LinkedIn every day, every day, yeah. every, day every day. And, and once in a while I'll, I read them, right? And once in a while I'll respond to them. And once in a while I'll coach people on, hey, you know what? If you would have went at this this way, yeah, right? And just flip your last paragraph with your first three, I'd actually really cared about what you were saying. But because you didn't, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, well, the biggest thing is if, if you get messages that, like right here, I just got one. Hi, my name is blank, the author of financial literacy, the blah, 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 blah. All you need to do is show up. I guarantee at least seven, four to seven appointments, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm like, what, what's he selling? And I just, I didn't even really read it. So. Well, I wouldn't have read it, read it either with all that blah, 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 blah. And that doesn't even yeah. make sense. No, I mean. <laughs> like use words, very, dude. It's their set. You know, you can tell they are sending that to tons of people. Yep. Tons of, yeah, it's just, you know. Well, so. that's, and that's just it, right? We don't, we, nobody wants to be sold to ever. Yeah. Right. We want to, we want to buy stuff. We love buying stuff. Can't wait to buy stuff, but we never want to be sold to. Um, I, so I like the education idea. I like the, how can I be of service idea and, and being helped. Right. And I love, I love people that come at it from that perspective. I just yep. read a profile yesterday from a lady that says she takes people and helps them expand their authority. That's a, that's a big thing now, right? Where I'm going to help you write a book get it published uh, and then okay. leverage yeah. what you've done. But the way her profile was written was very, very clear about what she does, but it was focused on the person that was reading it and why there's value for them. And I got done reading her invite and I looked at her summary and I shot her a note and said, I, I haven't shot somebody a note this fast after looking at their profile in three months. So good for you. Nice. And I already sent her profile to a buddy of mine that I'm having lunch with today. So, because I was like, you need to, you need to up your authority, homie. Ah, there you go. See, I think uh, that's a great, great idea. And yeah, you're right. It's what's in it for them is how you should write your, your profile and have that profile out there. And that's, and so that's a nice segue, right? Because when we look at profiles in general, so many people get, in there and they start looking at it and go, Whoa, this is overwhelming. I'm going to do this later. And next thing you know, they've got three jobs, the companies they worked at, the title was zero information about anything. Yeah. And, and then it just sits for months on end. Listen, there's no later in your calendar. It's not going to happen. So stop saying you're going to do it later. You've got to spend 45 minutes right now or whenever you decide to do it and fill it out as best you can the right way the first time, right? Just block the time that it's going to take. And then don't be surprised when it takes an hour because that's what it's going to take. <laughs> um, I have got, and we'll share this in the show notes, I've got a list of 20 things that you need to write in your profile. And we'll make sure that that's there in the, in the post um, okay. that, that will help. But a couple of the things that are, are really, really important is you've got two things at the top. It's your summary and then it's your experience. And so I see a lot of people misuse these two things. They use the summary to talk about the work that they're doing right now and what they do. And then they go in and they do the experience and, and they might as well just copy and paste the same thing, right? The experience yeah. is the what you do. The summary should be the why you do it. And when we think about the difference between what you do and why you do, why is it making me want to go look at mine now? Yeah. It's like, go check it out. Did, did, did I, I don't remember. It's been I, a long time. I, I am not critiquing yours in any way, shape or form. <laughs> Um, uh, I'd be happy to do it. The graphic behind it actually looks like crap, so I got to change that. I'm realizing. Yeah, yeah see, this is wow. nice. You get to oh. go play. I had to do all the heavy lifting on this. Exactly. Show. I like how this is. I had to. <laughs> so the why is engaging, right? Why is what draws people to us? Why is what we care about? And normally, why is where passion lives. The what we do, man, we've answered the what we do 475 times, and that was just in the last two months, right? We're so sick of the what we do that people are like tuning out because we've tuned out. We have to remember that anytime we interact with anybody for the first time, it may be the 500th time we've said it, but it's the first time they've heard it. 
So we got to treat that as such. And it's true on your profile as well. So try and write that summary from a why you do it, why you got into the work, what you love about it, what excites you, what value you can create for other people. Mm. And then when you get into this, the experience part, talk about the what you do, right? That's the piece that you almost could just copy and paste from your resume. And it makes it pretty easy. The other thing that becomes really, really important is we have to become bilingual. And we talked about this in previous shows. We have to talk about it in the language of our peers, right? So we want to talk about SEO or SEM or PPC, right? But we also have to say search engine optimization and search engine marketing and pay-per-click. You don't know who's looking at your, your profile and you need to talk you need to basically dumb it down. I mean, you shouldn't have it super high level because you have no idea who's looking at that profile. You have to speak in the language of the people that aren't in your business or aren't in your industry, right? And, and they may be smart as a whip about the things they know, right? You don't want to go up in an, a, an acronym battle with an IT guy. <laughs> with your little SEO and SEM and PPC and FBA, you know, <laughs> they'll eat you up all day long. They got all kinds of acronyms. So, you know, it's just one of those things. We got to make sure that we're speaking to the language of our industry and to the language of our prospects and customers. So do that in your profile. Um, a couple other things that I think are really important in your profile. And, and so I'm going to do a screen share. So if you're listening to this, we're probably about, 15 minutes in and you can just go over to our YouTube video or businessgrowthtime.com and you'll find this show and the video will be embedded in the write-up. And so we'll have make, we'll make sure it's tagged at what minute this actually happens. But I want to show you this one thing. Um, and it's really one of the best ways to, to get more people into, into your profile, excuse me, the ad connections. So I'm going into profile and right underneath my photo is this URL. And the URL says linkedin.com slash in slash Terry Bean. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, right here, right? So it's right under the view profile, right under the top block. Now, yep. that's because I've taken the time to customize mine. The majority of us haven't. And we don't even know that we can. So there's this little settings button, the universal sign for settings. It's kind of like a hexagony thing. You can click that and then you can go in and you can customize your URL. So if there's only one, right? So if your name's Janet Johnson and you're trying to do this in 2016, tough luck ain't going to happen. Right. So you might have to be Janet's marketing biz or Janet E. Johnson, which yeah, I think Janet is Janet E. Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. So, but yeah, if you have a common name and you haven't done this yet, you know, grabbing that URL is very important. You're going to have to do that. And so get that URL, change it, right? Click the settings. It'll show you. You can play around with it because, and get all the numbers and random letters out of there. Put your name or put something that represents your business in there. And then use that line, that URL, on the bottom of your email signature. So every time you're emailing someone, you could say, hey, I'm on LinkedIn. Are you here to connect with me? And it's a great way to, cr to grow your LinkedIn network with people that you're already communicating with. So How many I, do you have? How many connections out of curiosity? Um, right around 10,000. So give or take a couple of hundred. Um, and it's funny because if I look at it, I've got that many and I don't think I've invited 1,500. I set my link up in a way that people found me. Right? Uh, I, yeah, I, that's I, how mine is. Yeah, that's how mine is. I don't. And, and you know what? It, you know, this, all the, these pieces that you're talking about are so important because if you get your, your platform, the LinkedIn set up right, you can be found by others so easily. You know, I, I, all honesty, my biggest clients have all come from LinkedIn. But yeah. you know, I don't spend a lot of time there. And, so, and most people don't, right? No. We forget about it because yeah. it's like, well, I don't want to, I'm on, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. You know how many people show cat videos on LinkedIn? <laughs> 
doesn't happen, you know, and that part's awesome. Although I will tell you, it is becoming a little more Facebook esque since they've added I, likes and comments. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, so people that. are trying to get more likes, and that's unfortunate, but it's reality, and that's how we are. We're an egocentric society. So, the other thing I want to talk about while I have this open still okay. is this contact information piece, right? You have the ability to put your contact. You can have your email, you can have a phone number, you can put your address. Evidently it's still 2007. You can put your IM in here <laughs> in, case you, in case you still have an instant messenger account. When's the last time you saw an instant message? Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> Way to clean yeah. it up. I mean, the only thing, yeah, I could think of is, uh, yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, it's, Facebook messenger. I don't know. But, right. Yeah, don't that's that so funny. Interesting. But so, and then you can put your websites. And what's nice is it says company website or blog, but you can go in and you can edit these things to say exactly what you want them to say so people know what they're clicking instead of company website or blog. So you can name it what you want. See this one, Business Growth Podcast. So that'll send people to Business Growth Time so they can actually come hear us. My company website and then Detroit Business Networking goes to Motor City Connect. But the reason I'm telling you this is if I go to a profile and I see somebody I like that I want to connect with and I go to their contact information and I can't contact them, it drives me bonkers. The only reason I'm trying to contact you is for business and don't make it hard for me to do business with you, right? Yeah. Make yeah. it easy. Now, I always preface this, there is a pretty girl rule, right? If you're an exceedingly pretty girl, maybe your phone number is not the best thing to have on here because, um, well, guys suck. I don't know how to say it any other way, right? There's just... I was just it, looking at my profile viewers and there were a couple that I'm like, mm. Yeah. Hey, stalker boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and it's weird on LinkedIn to me, but it happens once in a while. I think it's just an odd thing to it, happen. LinkedIn. It happens. Well, it's mm -hmm. there's... There's a series, and I don't know why, but there's a, some women on LinkedIn that are sports models and, and um, yeah, let's call them sports models. And then there are other women that are doing things that may not be sports or modeling, but they're yeah. dressed very uh, non-LinkedIn-ish. And then all of a sudden you see one, and then you look at the people also viewed, and, like, it's a whole list. I was like, <laughs> oh I didn't know there were that many people dressed like this on LinkedIn, but got it. Okay. Um, so that's, those are a couple of things that I think are really, really important yeah. to look at. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the share here, and I'm going to get back to looking at you primarily. Um, and then we're going to talk about a couple other things. The most important thing I think you can do on LinkedIn is fill out your profile and fill it out the right way. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. second most important thing I think you can do on LinkedIn is get in the habit of sharing status updates. You know, and nobody gives a crap about what you ate for lunch here. So this isn't foodie central unless your business is being a foodie. But the rest of it, talk about your clients, talk about the business, talk about how you're being of service, talk about who you're helping. Right. And you can tag people just like in Facebook. You can tag them by hitting the at symbol and their name can fill in. And so it's selling without selling. It's storytelling about the work that you're doing. And it's a good way to stay top of mind. The other thing I suggest people do is we spend time with this scroll movement where we're scrolling through Facebook on our phone. Take 10% of the time that you do that on Facebook and do it on LinkedIn. Because the difference in terms of the content and what you're going to see is refreshing and remarkable. Now, you might not get to like pictures of your friend's kids, right? Or you may not hear about somebody's catechism graduation, but you're going to hear some really interesting stuff that can feed your mind and grow your business. So it's a good use of time. Then if you want to grow your authority, you can actually start posting. LinkedIn's got a really powerful blog engine. At one point, I stopped using my own blog and started blogging there. I could post something on my blog. I'd get 30, 40 looks, right? I'd get 400 on LinkedIn in a less period of time. I've got blogs that have over 10,000 views on LinkedIn, right? And shares up the wazoo. I think that's gone down because it became a little more crowded. It was really huge at the beginning, but I still think, you know, my suggestion, and I try to do this with all my blog posts is, 
create a blog post. I don't do it with the, the podcast, but if I'm doing a, you know, a long blog post on my website, I put it to a couple of um, guest blogging places that I have. I also put it on a LinkedIn full blog post. I mean, granted, you can share it, but also putting the full thing again. You could change the title. You, can ch you don't have to, though, is what I've been told. So, you know, I suggest if you create that blog content, do it again on LinkedIn because, like you said, you could get so many more viewers on that than you do on so many more and, and you're right you're 100 percent right you can share it and that's an easy way to get to do it you could just copy the link and post it as a status yeah. update but you're way better off from a longevity standpoint of yep. putting it on your site because then it stays on your profile people can see the post that you've created forever and ever and that's where the value comes in so you'll definitely want to leave that there and you, you never know people are searching that pulse thing which is what the blog engine's called pulse all the time so your content if worded yeah. properly and titled properly could pop up and, and it's weird because one person sees it they share it in the right spot and all of a sudden hundreds of people see it and it's it's just kind of neat how that works yeah yep so that's good. Um, the last thing is groups. And we'll talk about there. You can only be in 50 groups at a time, but they're a great way to be with people that are of like mind or of similar situation, right? There could be an alumni group. There could be a former company group. Um, there could be groups based on geography. There could be groups based on different technologies or different ideas. So pick where your customers are. Pick where your your competitors are right so you can stay ahead and learn what's going on pick where your your prospects are pick where the industry thought leaders are in and, and pick where you are doing business geographically and if you're worldwide that's a little harder but you know pick a market and focus but you don't need to be in 50 practice being in five right and and actually be active be and, there be i'm there. in 50 probably and i don't touch them you don't touch them right <laughs> And so I used to, it's just now it's like the Facebook groups are more where I live. So that's where you live. And that, and that makes sense to, especially when you look at your clients. Yeah. Um, but you know, one of the things that people are like, well, I post something, I don't get any engagement. That's because you got a lot of people running around posting stuff and not engaging with anything. Yes. You want more engagement, be more engaged like people's stuff, comment on people's stuff. Sometimes your comment tells more about you than what you actually yeah. posted, yeah. right? Yeah. So keep that in mind too. Groups are a great way to, um, you know, whether it's Facebook, whether it's LinkedIn, it's just a great way to connect with people on a more personal level. And yeah. not, you know, not trying to sell them something. Absolutely. And, and again, where you've already got some sort of, uh, I don't want reciprocity or some sort of natural inclination, right? You're, you're automatically a kindred spirit of sorts if you chose to be in the same group, right? There was a reason that you got there. Exactly. So, so that's LinkedIn, right? And that's, you know, one, one fifth, one tiny iota of LinkedIn, but it's LinkedIn. I'm going to start doing some LinkedIn webinars. Um, I've got them broken down where I'm going to do kind of a, entry level and then more of an advanced class so we'll make sure that we have some information on that by the time this comes out too because i gotta get in the habit of that um but we don't have a linkedin group for this show we have a facebook group for this show and you can find that facebook group for this show at businessgrowthtime.xyz no dot com because we're too cool for that dot com stuff. Unless you want to find our main page, which is of course at businessgrowthtime.com. So maybe we're not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then the other thing I want to mention is we we do have an email list where if you go, you will see the pop up if you go to the website. And it will should pop up. If you fill that in, you will get a guide that is the two seven two thousand seventeen marketing guide predictions marketing guide and uh i was one featured in this and it's just a whole bunch of great information plus on top of that you will be able to get notice whenever we have a show and that way you can get an email and go hey this is of interest to me maybe this isn't and grab you know be alerted so that you're aware of when our shows come out you'll be the first to know because sometimes those podcasts come out before the blog posts are actually promoted. You and said sometimes. Some, all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lately. 
<laughs> but every Tuesday morning we launch this podcast like that. And now you will, if you are interested in that, you will be on that alert list immediately the second that it goes out. Janet is very snappy. I like it. She is very snappy. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So, yes, you can find the podcast on Stitcher. You can find it on iTunes because that's where all the cool kid podcasting things happen. Um, again, sorry to show some video in here, but you may want to take a look at that if you haven't already customized that URL. Yes. Really, really a good way to grow your network with people you already know. So, yeah. really good actually, information, whether you've been on, whether you've been on LinkedIn forever like myself and you go, you know, you made me think, you know, Oh boy, I think it's time to audit. I'm all about that. audit. Yeah. Auditing your stuff. <gasps> Maybe I'll make a LinkedIn so audit. Time. Yes. It's time to, well, you can clean up mine. I have one. You have a LinkedIn so, audit? Yeah. Oh yeah. I have, I have all the audits of the, I have all the audits. Facebook I'm... and yeah, but I think Terry would be better at the LinkedIn. I'll, 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 I'll audit. I'll audit your LinkedIn audit. You'll audit my LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, we're auditing everything. Well, honor your stuff, whether you're brand new on LinkedIn or you've been on there a long time. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. This is like episode 70 ish, 69, maybe somewhere in there. 69. We're we're around there. 70 ish. That's good. Um, and uh we appreciate you. And we didn't call you Ernie once, but we just did. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.